This little video is called Non-Complementary Behavior. This is one of the most transformative tools and research topics that I have found. So one of the things that all of us humans have, we have brains that kind of mirror and mimic what is being shown to us. And that's called complementary behavior. So for instance, if someone walks into a room and they have a great big smile, it's really hard not to smile back at them, right? But let's say someone comes at you and they're angry and they're upset, that's also really hard not to copy back. Um, and that is complementary, but it's also reactionary. And so a lot of times our human behavior escalates or it kind of becomes more of whatever it is has already been shown to us. What it, And this is really easy to do with kids, right? So especially right now, there's a lot of extra feelings and we have to understand that whatever we project, project to those children is going to greatly affect their own behavior. So if a child's having a meltdown and we have a grown-up version of a meltdown in response to that, like screaming or whatever, again, no guilt, we're all going to have good and bad moments, it's not going to help that child learn to regulate and learn how to handle those hard feelings, right? Um, so one of the things that we can do in a moment where we're trying to maybe manipulate behavior for the better is to stop, to try to take in the, whatever it is that you're taking in and to think about what you would like to see in that child. So if someone comes at you in anger, you can try coming back at them with contriteness. Um, I often use this in my teaching at, to really great success. And just to be very clear, it's much easier to be a teacher than it is a parent. Um, so if I have a child that does something in a class that's maybe a little bit rude or inappropriate, I will start with, I'm so sorry. And then I will explain why that behavior was not correct. And I might even model what the correct behavior could be. So if they're talking out of turn, I'm so sorry, it was it was so-and-so's turn to talk. They haven't finished yet. You'll have a turn as soon as they're finished. And then you'll see them, you'll see their brains kind of work it through. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and this, there's a lot of things that you can do with non-complementary behavior. I find it to be a really powerful tool in all relationships. Um, now, the hard thing is, it is hard. It's hard to stop in the moment, collect yourself, and think about what you're hoping to see in the other person that you're dealing with. Um, it is far easier to be reactive. It's hard, far easier to be shaming or negative. And it's a harder thing to say with your children, I love you when they're hurting and they're not being very loving. But in the long term, I think what we want to give all of our kids right now is an extra dose of love and we're going to be okay and all of that. If you want to research more about non-complementary behavior, there is a lot of information out on the internet. And I strongly recommend doing a quick Google search of NPR, non-complementary behavior. And you can also throw in their Invisibilia if you want, because they have some podcasts about the topic. And NPR did a lot of sort of research about non-complementary behavior a couple years ago. And I thought it was really, really powerful stuff. Um, I hope you find that helpful and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.